hello, hello. I'm here. Forgive me. I haven't put up enough videos. I know that. Um. So let's um. Oh, I wanted to talk about. I just finished a book. I took the book back. I would have showed it. Um. Blood in My Eye by George Jackson. Let me go and get a stand so I can. Blood in My Eye by George Jackson. And uh, I thought I, I, it was an excellent book. I loved it. The first thing I noticed is that he was murdered on August 21st. Um, 1971 there we go and I was born August 22nd 1971 and you know you get goosebumps because you, you, you realize that we live inside time and space we live in a context something that I, 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 I have a hard time convincing people or making people understand and to know I came the day after he was murdered and it just brought out how as a black boy I was being brought into the United States at a time when the black community was actually just being completely disintegrated and destroyed because they were murdering all of the thoughtful um people either murdering them or buying them off but mostly murdering the real thoughtful ones that could have created space for the future of thought in the black community there is no space for it the few people I know who are really doing it they're doing it in white spaces and that's okay it's, it's fine it, it, it actually kind of makes it but there's 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 limit because if you make people uncomfortable in their space, you're gone. So, you know, it just brought up a lot more um, feelings about how none of our parents really did anything to create a space or hold that space. I guess they were exhausted, tired. And just bringing us into that space and not making the space just compounded their mistakes of, of well, in my personal position, just compounded my mother's mistake of having me at all. So that brought up just reading George Jackson, just beginning, brought that all up. Um. Then I'm I'm reading through the book and I'm like, yeah, this this is good, and it's just it's just hitting me like people like this don't exist. When George Jackson is talking about what we need to do to change this society, what we need to do, he's giving his analysis. And I'm thinking, man, you know, these people don't exist anymore. And if he was still around, he would be, I think he probably would be, he could, could still be around because some of those old guys are still around. He would look around and be miserable as hell. Like, damn, this is what we've become. So I just thought, man, I, I don't know anybody like this, even in, in, in life or even the podcast, even the so-called revolutionary podcasters I listen to. They're not nothing like this. Everybody is comfortable. Everybody's got their own spot. And nobody's given up their comfort, their jobs, their positions in mainstream institutions for anything. Now, the great thing and the hopeful thing, well, I shouldn't say hopeful, but the great thing is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because this society was built on unsustainable concepts. In order to keep this society alive, you'd have to burn and destroy the whole planet, which would make it all moot anyway. So we're going to be forced to develop something else. As a matter of fact, we're already in the midst of that. The problem that we're having is a lot of people are so deeply uncomfortable and entrenched in the old way. 
even those people who suffer are invested in this society. And I, and I didn't know until 2020, I was fighting, pushing, trying, and I just, I lost a lot, man. I lost my family. I lost everything just trying to work toward this and create for this. Um, and in 2020, it showed me, no, black people, you know, and I, and I have friends from other ethnic groups. I have white friends. I have friends from Persia. I have friends from that. But I had got in my adulthood, had got so hooked up with the black thing. And it and it's dawned on me, man, these, these people are gone. Because 2020 gave us free. It's like the doors were open and a lot of people didn't walk through the door. Didn't want to be free. Didn't want to do the work. Not that they're lazy because they're working hard for other people. But they didn't want the responsibility of being free. And it was sad. I was angry at myself mostly for not. Because I kind of had a feeling that's what it was. But you couldn't tell because we never had the chance. But I was saying, nah, these people would be doing more. But So I was kind of drifting away from them. But 2020 just, boom, hit it. And, um, man, it, it, it's terrible, man. Black people are really, really, really in a bad They're in such a bad shape. I don't think as a group we're going to be around much any longer. Especially what we call the Jim Crow the black people from this part of the diaspora from the United States, eh, we ain't going to be around too much longer. And I just hope the young people can survive, or at least a, a large chunk of them, because I'm looking at them, a lot of them ain't going to be around either. A lot of them ain't going to be around either. I mean, I was in the store with, um, just today, um, with a black woman and a black kid black child, I'm sorry. And he was almost as big as me. And I'm overweight. And this kid had been about 12, 13. Just big. And I'm like, the health problems this child is going to have, he's not even really just a teenager yet. The joints, the weight on the joints alone, heart, right? The stress, the fatigue, from having to carry that much weight around. So, um, I see a lot of children like this. So, I mean, George Jackson, the book, Blood of My Eye, you should read it. It really is good. It kind of tells you what kind of person you need or need it to be. Like I said, it's happening. Revolution is happening, but it's not going to be people land. It's going to be nature land. It's going to be um, weather event land. It's going to be Flood, hurricane, tornado, earthquake, wildfire land. It's going to be um, animals attacking lead. It's not going to be people led, but it's going to happen. And I'm spending a lot of my time trying to prepare as best I can with whatever resources I have for that time. It's going to be a technological age, right? which means we're going to need less infrastructure, physical infrastructure, which is good because it won't be around. Um, so it's going to be that. So you're going to have to be proficient. But most of these apps and most of these things are easy to use. So you're going to have to be proficient in that. We're all going to be working online from one way or another. Um, that's almost the case. I would venture to say more than 50% of the people work online. I work using online platforms. I have a friend that does telephone work, but that's he still is using a lot of tech. He also makes films, so he's working online. He's doing a lot of at least tech. And um eventually he's gonna be streaming somewhere. Um people who work for Uber, people who work for Lyft, people who work for DoorDash, people who work for people who work for Amazon. That's all online working. Because even though you're driving the truck physically, you're employed, you're, you're, you're using the app to actually do the work to get your resources, your compensation. So um, I think that's going to be it. And you're going to have a lot of physical infrastructure that's deteriorating at the same time when you have technical. The cloud will be in place. Um, 
so it's 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 a little weird. Uh, it's it's very dystopian in in some senses, but I'm just preparing to try to survive in it and live in it. If I live that a, a few more years, because it's it's happening already. Um, so yeah, George Jackson though it gives you. It's a great read. It's not that big of a book. Um, and it tells you the vision that they had at that time. And so, you know, it's a, it's a shame. I, I really would like to see what would have happened if the black community had said, you know what, it doesn't matter how many of them we, they kill. We're going to push these concepts and the hell with it. Instead of saying, well... I got to make it. I got to conform. I got to survive. I got to try to keep the baby physically alive because physical life without mental life is a horror show and we wear it. And if you don't believe me, just sit one day in a park or sit in a public space. And I've said this before, just people watch and just look at us physically and you can see the pain, the suffering, the thoughtlessness, the, the, the consequence from all of that, we wear it. We're on our bodies. We're in pain. Right now where I'm living, it's a lot of at different ethnic groups. A lot of them Asian and a lot of people Spanish speaking. I think there's a lot of Dominican and things like that. But the black people are not off sitting on the stoop getting high, nodding off, sleeping on the bench, sleeping on the park, sleeping in the subway station. That's basically what what's happening with us. So, you know, and um as the as the people sitting in the hood walking around looking crazy, as my ex wife used to say, they're walking around looking crazy. So yeah, it's always good to know to look back at history and to look at people doing things um, and look at people that were really strong and fighting. Uh, we don't get to see that anymore. So re check out Blood in Your Eye, Blood in My Eye, George Jackson. Um, and see how they killed out, how they killed us. How they just killed our community. They killed it. The mind of it, the spirit of it even is gone. And when they physically did that, they flooded in the 70s, the, the, the neighborhood with heroin. So they nodded people off. Then they came, followed that in the 80s with crack on top. And that was the end of it. That was just, we we haven't gotten over that. We, we, we've been in decay. And, um. Uh, fading out of existence since. But the thing is, I look at our young people with the technology. I don't think that they have the strength, but they have the sophistication. Um, and again, there's some young people in my family. I, I, I don't know. I try to be as helpful as I can to them and sometimes to making these videos and I hope they see it and it gets to them. Um, try to help them as much as I can and talk to them as much as I can and share what I know so they can do something they have a chance and they have the tools um, we just have to see if they can stand up to the pressures the attacks because some of them don't even know they're being attacked and, and that's the thing and um, they're holding on to things that they shouldn't be holding on to, just like their parents are, just like we are, just like our parents were. And are they going to be able to let that go, use the tools and use their sophistication to transform them forward? All of the young people in this society. Because we're going to have to get over, we're going to have to get work through, we're going to have to destroy and get put down this race thing. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it. So... Um, I think they can I know some of them um, but I don't like to get biased because I'm, I'm in a circle with there's some really good young people but then sometimes when I'm on the train and I'm on the bus I'm looking at some of these young people I'm like uh, 
I don't know. Is it 50 50? But that's that's better than than what we are. If 50% of them are, are, are still conscious enough when they're 18, 19, then that's more than my generation, than Generation X, as far as the black community is concerned. Because people my age are gone. I mean, completely gone. It's to the point now where I told my ex-wife the other day, I walk around like I'm in an insane asylum. I just walk around. I look at people. Sometimes they speak. I just nod. Hi, how are you doing? Just like you would in an insane asylum. You you make eye contact. You acknowledge them. Hi, how are you? Yeah, it's good, good. And then you, you move through. You go to the store. You come back. Go to the library. Come back. Take the bus to visit friends. Come back. You know what I mean? Um, that's what we are. But again, check out George Jackson. And um, if you want, check out Patreon.com. Maybe I'll put it in the link. Patreon, the link's in there. But Patreon.com slash Connorson Center. Putting a lot of work up there. That's why I haven't been um, making videos. And my foot, there's something wrong with my foot. I think I banged it running from a car because these cars, they drive like they're insane. I mean, everything is... It's a dystopia out there, but... It's not to the point where it's the purge completely, where you can get gutted each time you walk out. I mean, you could, but it's not like people are just gutting people everywhere. Um, in mass yet. So... And there's still some public policies that could be implemented... That people are talking about is kind of, mm, but not implementing. And when they do implement it, they don't implement it correctly. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see which way this turns. Are they going to do the public policy that will give people stability? So that the city, states, and towns can have stability? Or will they let people just drop and other people will just have to, will function? And just leave them side by side. And how that, will that turn out? We don't know. So I made this video longer than I than I should have. But it's never too long when you're talking about um, George Jackson. And um, right now I'm reading. This is a good one. I think I might do a course on this. I'm reading Black Futures. It's pictures and text. And... Um, artwork from all kinds of people. So, I have a couple of classes I want to do on this already. And uh, we'll see. If I can get five, then I can do a course on Udemy. And that's udemy.com slash user slash Timothy dash Connerson. I think. But if, or, and I put it in my Patreon. But I'm on more, so many platforms. I mean, you know. Um, I will see you until next time. I'm going to try to do another one tomorrow. But I'm going to be running around, so I don't know. Um, I have to check in on an elder. But until next time, uh, I have to take something to an elder for another elder. <laughs> so, um, until next time, take care. And uh, be safe.